Yeah, I'm on the love. Read verse 14 again. And they that fed the swine fled and told in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And what? They were afraid. Let's keep reading. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was what possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Now watch this. Remember I said they wanted Jews? You know why they didn't want Jesus? Ain't that something? If you saw this man that you knew lived among the tombs and was homeless, had all these demons, and you saw him clothed in his right mind, wouldn't you rejoice? Yes. <laughs> I would be happy about it. But you know why these people weren't happy? Because their business was pigs. Jesus stopped the pig business. He affected their business. Their money. Get out of here. They didn't want no parts of Jesus. Go. Get out of our country. But watch what Jesus did. Oh, man. This is why I'm going to tell you. Despite your condition, Jesus is getting ready to use this man. Jesus is getting ready to use this man just like he's ready to use you. Amen. Amen. Verse 17 again. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with them. So the demon, the man is saying, Jesus, now can I go with you? Can I be with you, Jesus? Now let's see what Jesus says. I've never really seen Jesus turn nobody down without coming to be with him. Amen? Amen. You know, I heard of one person in there, he said, no, not this time. But this guy, he said, no, you can't come with me. Why? Let's read Verse 19. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends. Are y'all here? Go home to your friends and tell them how great a thing the Lord had done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Amen. And he departed and began to publish in uh, Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all the men did what? Marvel. Now, that word the capitalist, you know what that means? I have to look that up. That means the capitalist just doesn't mean the capitalist in one city. That word the capitalist represents ten different cities. So when Jesus told him to go to your friends, he was talking, go to all the region, you're my first missionary. You can't come with me because they will receive me. But they will receive you Amen. representing me. Amen. Are y'all not hearing this? Amen. You can go into the ten cities as my representative. All right. That's why you can't come with me, because I need you to testify about me. Amen. Amen. So your homeless condition is going to be a testimony about what Jesus has done. Amen. And you're going to go to all the byways and the highways around Montgomery, Selma, wherever God sends you. Don't be ashamed. Amen. Don't be ashamed to testify what God has done for you. That's why you can't always be with me. Amen? Woo! That's something to rejoice in. Amen. 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 This man was the first missionary. Amen. The first missionary. Are you ready to be a missionary for Jesus? Yes. Are you ready to go share what he's done for you? Amen. Do you got more to share than just a plate of food? Amen. And some clothing? Amen. Amen. And a bed to sleep in? Amen. I believe you do. Mm-hmm. Because you know why? Everybody in this room is a survivor. Yeah. If you've been homeless, you'll survive. Amen. If you've been to drug addiction, you'll survive. Amen. If you've been to alcoholism, you'll survive. Amen. Amen. And can't nobody survive like you. Those people who never been through that, they wouldn't know what to do. Amen. But you know exactly what to get so needed. You know exactly what to use to sleep. You know exactly how to lay on the ground and get caught. Don't you? you know exactly how to stay warm. Amen. There are some people who went crazy because they ain't got no heat. No more. And no toilet paper. Amen. Come on. Amen. I'm talking to people who know. Amen. 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 Let's read a little bit from the book real quick. Now, we're talking about feelings of attachment and homelessness. Sad eyes and uh, shadow deep emptiness reflect a gloomy picture of what might have been a normal life. In their eyes, you can often be seen the pain of not belonging of alienation, of detachment from society that has so much, but gives so little to those who don't fit in. I mean, y'all know that's right. Hey, brother, can you spare a quarter? 
Can I clean your windshield for a tip? You got any spare change? Their voices sound the same, don't they? In many ways, they are the same, yet they are all different. They are black, they are expanded, they are white. Some are sick, some are on drugs and alcohol dependent. Some are HIV positive. Many are hungry, cold, and dying. You see them everywhere pushing carts filled with tin cans, plastic bottles, etc. They dress with several types of different color outer garments. I call them Mr. Browns. Amen. <laughs> several types of different garments and sport a host of multicolored stocking caps. Hello. <laughs> scars and hats. I mean, scars and stocking caps, man. Phew, geez. They busy themselves looking for items to sell, or they belong to a group of homeless that are uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, yeah, belong to. A, I can't read that word. I'm sorry. Or they belong to a group of homeless that are incognito. Thank you. Seeing them on the street, you would never know that they were homeless or lived in a homeless shelter. Who are they? Where did they come from? Where do you belong? They are the homeless. They are legions, millions. They belong wherever they can be. Many who are homeless were once professionals, lawyers, doctors, teachers, draftmen, engineers, etc. Many have education and intelligence. Someone has said that many Americans are just two paycheck or just two paychecks away from being homeless. Home today, homeless tomorrow. You mean some or several negative life experiences are blamed for a person becoming homeless. The loss of a job, car, home, family, husband, wife are often cited as activating events which lead to homelessness. Feelings of alienation and detachment from society, family and friends can dominate the life of anyone who gives up because of some negative situation in life. Alienation and detachment are feelings that are supported by negative thinking, such as negative agitation, self-damnation, and other irrational thoughts. For most, for most persons, the loss of their job, home, spouse, or a lover, etc., the situation is bad, but it is also beatable. They are down, but not out. However, too many of those who are homeless, their thoughts tell them that the situation could be worse, that society or someone else or something, disaster, etc., is to be the blame for their misfortune. They may believe that there is nothing that they can do about the situation but be homeless. <coughs> do they feel helpless? Maybe, but maybe not. It may take more than just the loss of a job and no money to become homeless. It might take a change of attitude. It might take a change of attitude. Until you change your attitude, you're going to remain homeless. Everything about your condition and mindset is where you plan to go. Because whatever you think you are, you are. Wherever you want to be, believe you can see it first. Start seeing it in your mind's eye. And I guarantee you, you can. You know, God used to give me visions about preaching and visions about going here and going there. Wow, I was getting hot. I said, it ain't going to happen. I thought it would happen in Philadelphia, but guess where it's happening at, people? After 15 years, it's happening right here in London. But I had to learn to step out of faith. Did I ever know I would be a member of Montgomery after living in Philadelphia for 50 years? And all of a sudden, in one year, I stepped out of faith, and I'm in Montgomery, helping more people than I ever could believe. Not only in here, on my job, walking down the street. I don't care where I go, I'm being blessed because I'm helping someone else. I had to learn to begin to help someone else before I got blessed, people. Amen? Amen? Let me read one more chapter here. What is the answer to homelessness? I'm going to skip over a couple of things. Jesus understood homelessness and alienation. He could personally identify with the homeless. He is quoted as saying, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man himself has nowhere to lay his head. Amen. I know he said that. I love that verse. The difference in the homelessness of Jesus and that of the homeless population today is attitude and belief. 
The attitude of Jesus was strong and positive despite the circumstances of his life. He wasn't on the streets running from pain, but delivering other men and women from their pain. Amen. What made the attitude of Jesus strong and positive? What were his beliefs that supported his strong, positive attitude? One of Jesus' disciples, John, quoted Jesus as saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you. John 14, 1 through 3. It never ceases to amaze me that when a person who was homeless or alienated or lonely comes to God and joins a church body, that this same person experiences a change in attitude about himself and about the world. Hearts troubled by feelings of alienation and detachment are healed by three basic beliefs. That one belief is belief in God. Number two is belief in teachings and methods of Jesus. And finally, number three is belief in your future as a member of God's family. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump to something that God gave me. Because a lot of times when you get homeless, you get yourself in packs. You begin to get around homeless shelters. See, in Philadelphia, we have a homeless language. We come in the shelters too. And the state have decided that they know this language because you have to go into a homeless shelter. Y'all come here. Y'all sign that paper. That same paper y'all sign to stay every night? In Philadelphia, it's called a missile. And if your name is not on that missile, you are not represented as a dollar bill because your name on the missile represents you as a dollar bill to the state. So that homeless shelter gets paid because they give that sheet and say that name is there. So I had to learn the homeless language of that. Why? Because the way they would do it, if you didn't, you had a curfew. And most homeless shelters in Philadelphia, you had to be in by 9 o'clock. So they couldn't understand why all the homeless people were on the street. Because their stuff was getting stolen. So they would say it was the homeless people stealing. No! When you're homeless, y'all get a camaraderie, don't you? Y'all learn to be amongst one another and attached with one another because you both got the same survival instinct. So I said, they weren't stealing my stuff. So who's stealing my stuff? You know who was stealing the stuff? Because when you didn't show up at 9 o'clock to sign that missile, they would strip your bed. Now, was it the homeless stripping your bed? They would empty your lock. Was it the homeless that your lock? No, it was the working staff in those shelters. They stole everything. So it wasn't the homeless stealing. It was the people working there stealing. From you. That was going with my mind. You were there at 901. You was late. And they counted every second. Boom. I lost more stuff than a homeless shelter because I got there at 901 than any place I've ever been. Because I wasn't there to sign the mission. Then they put you right through the whole program again. And make you go through the whole process of registration. That's why homeless stay on the street, because their people in the programs are stealing. It's not their partner. But let me show you a group of people that lined up with one another. Amen. I want y'all to go to the book of Luke 17. Some of you may know this story too. But this is the first time I ever saw this story in a manner, in a manner that really blessed me today to deal with homelessness. Because I always focused on one person, but at the day at this time I mean, I focused on all of them. All of them. Because they did have a camaraderie. Because guess what? Because when we read this story, we're going to find out color didn't matter, nationality didn't matter, circumstance didn't matter, because they all had something in common. And we're going to find out what it is. Ready? Luke, Luke 17, starting at verse. Let's go up to 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men. Now I like that ten, because 